I'm Tim Ellis, and thank you for joining us for Laneway Live. Tonight's guest has not only won the Australian Junior Championships of Close-Up Magic, but also the Australian Junior Championships of Stage Magic, among many other awards. Please welcome Prue Spencer. Well, hi. Yeah, where, where are you? Where are you calling from? It looks like you're sitting in a, a lounge room. You've got a plant behind your lamp. Where is that? That is in my lounge room. You got it right in my lounge room. Just chilling here. <laughs> and so, how has the uh, isolation treated you? You are a a seventeen year old. Yes. Sitting at home, bored out of your mind, magician. Yep. <laughs> studying, yep. Studying VCE. What? is going on in the world of Prue Spencer? Uh, a lot of stunning right now. I'm in VCE, so there's a lot to do. Um, I'm doing two, three, fours, philosophy and textile, so I've got a lot of work to do for those. And then, yeah, like you said, I'm doing some magic. I've got, um, I'm happy to be at home where I have all my magic resources, so that's handy, at least that's a positive. So yeah, I'm doing, I'm working on some new material right now. And um, yeah, just working hard on school because that's the priority right now, unfortunately, especially in this time. Like it's so hard. We're not going back to school next term. So we've got to um, really work hard at home right now just to get ahead and make sure we're up to date. So yeah, that's how my holidays have been so far. <laughs> holidays, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're on holidays now, school break. But not, we're, not we're going to the second week. Yeah, not that you can tell that we're on holidays. Everyone's on holidays at the moment. We're all full of holidays. <laughs> Vacation mode for everyone. So you are um, you're doing VCE. Normally, when you do VCE, uh, you take time off magic, and you and and you you weren't going to do a show at the Melbourne Magic Festival this year because of your studies, because uh, you yeah. have to dedicate a lot of time to that. But now that you can't go to school, I assume you're not going to back to school after these holidays. Yeah, well, we're not quite sure yet. It depends on what the government says about school. I heard they're having a meeting dedicated to education today. So um, it depends on what they're saying. But the school has said that it looks like we're not going back to school this term. So after the July break, we'll go back. But yes, yeah, so as now, we're, we're not going back by the looks of it, which is a bit sad. I like going to school and, you know, seeing my friends. So that's a bit upsetting. But um, yeah, I get more time to work on magic. So that's there's a silver lining to everything. <laughs> Will they be sending lessons by online or something? Or how, how are you going to actually get your VCE done? So they're setting up a Zoom um, like conference call. So a lot of schools are doing that now. We're going to communicate by Zoom. And um, just like, you know, we have a timetable every day. So um, we're, we're going to run off that timetable practically. So they'll do, like, if I have maths first period, they'll go maths and we'll do a Zoom call, we'll all have our notebooks and we got told to bring our textbooks and all our books home at the end of the term. So everyone's got all of their textbooks and um, resources that we need. So yeah, we'll be calling teachers, taking down notes, going from class to class and yeah. Wow, the technology has helped you tremendously in this situation. Now you, yeah. you are also, of course, a magician, a very talented magician, a winner of the Australian Junior Championships in stage and close-up. And you started very young, I assume. Yeah, yeah. I, I always had an interest in magic. My dad did the classic thumb trick where it comes off like that. I can't do it as good as him, actually. And um, he, he used to do that. And I was just, oh, I was so starstruck. I was like, oh, my gosh, that's, that's just amazing. And the way I felt, I wanted other people to feel when I did something. So I was like, I'm going to pick up magic. And I got a magic kit and I played around with it. So that was about age seven, I reckon. And then in 2015, when I was 13, I entered the Australian Junior Championships of Magic for the first time. And um, I came second. And to me, that was just, oh, I was so excited. <laughs> And that was a real motivation to keep it up because I remember sitting in the Sydney hotel, I think we were seeing our auntie in Sydney and I saw the notification for the championship. And I said to mum, oh my gosh, look at this. I had no idea this existed. I have to enter. And I didn't do a lot of magic. I kind of just played around with it. And mum was like, oh, okay, are, are you sure you want to do it? But, and I said, yeah, yeah, I definitely want to do it. So mum was encouraging me and I was like, yeah, definitely going to do it. I entered, came second and that was so exciting. And I thought this is definitely something I want to keep going now. Like it's clear I've got a little bit of skill that I can build off. And yeah, so from 2015 onwards, I was like, you know, this is, I'm going to take this seriously now. I really, really love this. 
And so who, who helped you? You had a mentor? Yeah, so I've got a lot of help from Dom Chambers. So leading up to my 2017 performance at the Australian Junior Championships, um, Dom and I workshop a lot of different routines, concepts, and um, we found one we really liked and we worked off that. So yeah, a lot of my performances have had the help of Dom Chambers, who's absolutely amazing, very talented magician. So yeah. Well, we're going to have a quick look at a clip from your 2017 stage performance right now. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> David, will you hold your sport? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, David. We'll give you one more go. Dominoes. Yeah. Okay. You got. You guys get the point. There's a whole bunch in here. <laughs> alrighty, David. I'd like you to open up to any page, but one page only. Alrighty. You've got one? Yeah. Don't tell me that everyone knows David's restaurant. Yeah. Alrighty. Now, David, let's, you know, he's, he's been all right so far. If you had a bit of trouble, that's okay. It's all right. We'll recap together. David, firstly, well, you almost accepted alcohol from a minor. <laughs> then David chose what car? Good job, yeah. sir, you remembered. Alrighty. And then David chose a restaurant that everyone knows but I don't know. Alrighty. Let's make some magic happen. Waiter! Get it! <laughs> So you also won the close-up that year? Yes. Yeah, I did. I did a routine about marriage, which was ironic, being a 13-year-old talking about marriage. Hello, hello. How are you all going tonight? Good. I'm Prue Spencer. It's lovely to be here. Um, I'm so excited to be here tonight because I love a good magic show because it brings so many people together. Tonight, for example, we have introverts. So give me a cheer for an introvert. <laughs> a bit louder, introverts. Like, um, we also have extroverts. Give me a cheer for an extrovert. <laughs> awesome. So introverts, extroverts. This guy who's staring at me, so perverts too. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, all jokes aside, tonight I'm going to talk to you guys about something serious. It's actually something that I'm an expert on. Marriage. Why is a 15 year old girl an expert on marriage? You may be thinking, well, I'm an expert because for, because for many years my dad has told me that marriage is like a deck of cards. And in the beginning, all you need are two hearts and a diamond. But by the end, well, you wish you had a club and a spade. <laughs> and, and, and look, the couple I live with right now, mum and dad, they say marriage is truly magical and that there are five magic words for a successful marriage. They are, I'm sorry, it's my fault. And um, because we're talking about marriage, I reckon before I start doing some magic, I'd like to gauge the level of expertise in the audience. So if you're married, give me a cheer. <laughs> nice. If you're not married, give me a cheer. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. The last bunch 
don't share with Kathy after. That's the same routine you did in the Now You See Us show last year, is it? Uh, the marriage routine I didn't do in the Now You See Us. I did that in 21, which is a one night show I did with Josh and Deke Butterworth. And so that was um, called 21 Magic's Next Generation. So I did that routine in there. So last year you were actually very busy with your shows, weren't you? You had Josh's show and then Now You yes. See Us, which was an all-female magic show. Yes, yeah. It was Lee Cohen and Nicola Gidley and I. And we did five nights in the Melbourne Spiegel tent. And that was, that was so fun. That was, that was one of my best magic experiences. So between that and 21 and different gala shows, like the Kids Gala and Close Up Galas, it was a very, very busy festival for me, but it was one of the best. And you also had, uh, I saw Judith Lucy came along. Yes, yes. So we had the Melbourne comedian Judith Lucy come to Now You See Us. And in fact, only two days ago, she released a podcast with us featured on it. So during the festival, we taped a podcast with her for her new podcast called Overwhelm and Di Overwhelmed and Dying. And that's part of the ABC's podcast. And so that came out a couple of days ago. And so Judith filmed that, um, sorry, recorded that with us during the festival. And she also came and saw the show and we got her up for one of the trips. And yeah, it was an amazing experience and so great to meet her and um, be inspired by another female in the arts. Well, if you want to listen to that podcast, we'll put a link right down there. So people can uh, click on that and have a listen to the cast of Now You See Us being interviewed by Judith Lucy. Now the show actually got some, some great responses because a lot of people hadn't seen a magic show of, of all females and especially being that uh, two of the females were very young. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a good response. We had great audiences each night. And like you said, yeah, it's a unique show because three females in one show isn't often seen in magic. So that was, um, yeah, we, we really took the female idea as our marketing point almost and kind of said, you know, this is really unique and come support us and come see what we can do. And uh, yeah, it was a great, great run. And were you designing the routines specifically from a female perspective or were you just going, look, it doesn't matter. They're just magic routines. We're women doing magic. The main thing is the magic. Yeah, I, we all had our solo performances and group performances, so I can't speak on Nicola and Lee's behalf on their solo performances, but for mine and at least the group performances, we didn't really take, oh, this is like a female routine. We just did magic and we're females, you know, it was as simple as that. And so, yeah, we just made routines we really enjoyed ourselves and um, they didn't really have a female twist to it. Um, it was just, yeah, us performing. At the end, we did this appearing trick where we kind of um, expanded on that female topic. And so that one, yeah, that had a bit of the theme of female magicians. But otherwise, yeah, it was just us doing some of our favourite tricks together. Now, you also uh, did some juggling in the show and you've been training with Circus Oz. Yeah, so I've been training with Circus Oz since I was in year five. I don't know what year that was. I think it was 2014. It was a long year ago. <laughs> And so, um, yeah, I train with them every Saturday and Wednesday. So I'm part of their troop called the Fanatics Troop. So basically we're a group of people under age 18 and we work together and Circus Oz sends us to different um, places to perform and we kind of show people what the classes are about and so we're kind of like a display group for Circus Oz and we do performances. And so, yeah, through that program, I've learned how to juggle, tumble, do trapeze, all of the circusy things. And um, I've really taken a liking to juggling. So I included bounce juggling in Now You See Us. And that was, yeah, that was, I really enjoyed doing that. It was something new. I haven't done it before. So I thought this is my opportunity to showcase some of my skills apart from magic. And yeah, that's what I did. And I think it was I liked having a bit of juggling in the magic show. I thought it kind of broke it up a bit. And, um, you know, I think we all have different skills that we put into that show. So like Nicola, for example, she loves fish. She's really passionate about um, aquariums and fish life. And so she used fish in some of her routines. And then Lee, of course, has her beautiful rabbit. So she used some of her animals. And then I had juggling. So apart from our magic, we all had a little something that said a bit extra about our personality and our passions. Well, my mentor, Lindsay, always used to say, 
give them everything you've got. If you can play the accordion, put it into the show. If you can do whatever you can do, put it into the show. And I like that attitude. And I know you've also put a lot of your stand up comedy into your show as well. Yeah, exactly. So I do a bit of comedy with my magic and that's, yeah, that's another little skill I have. And I think it's great to make people laugh. You know, I, I, my dad has been a very prominent figure in my life. He has always been a bit of a comedian and um, I feel like I've picked up a bit of comedy from him and I've been inspired by him to make people laugh. And he always makes me laugh and it just makes my day. So I think if I can do the same on stage, even if I'm doing magic, just adding a bit of comedy um, adds a bit more to my performance and to the experience of the audience. Uh, you uh, took your comedy even further a few years ago with Class Clowns. Yeah, yeah. So Class Clowns is a competition for people under age 18. That's part of the International Comedy Festival. So they do get yeah, a competition every year where there's three different stages. So there's your um, heat, which is kind of where you live. So I, it was actually held where Magicians at Work is held in um, the channel at the Art Centre. So I entered the first heat and then we all competed there doing stand-up comedy. And then people got into the state finals and I was lucky enough to advance to the state finals. So then we went to the state finals, which was also at the Arts Centre, and then there's the national finals. And unfortunately, I didn't get that far to go to the national finals, but some other amazing comedians went through and did really well. So it was a great opportunity to um, just expand my comedy experience. And also I learned a lot. They had different comedy mentors come in and workshop our routines. So that was a really good learning experience for me. So do you think you'll pursue stand-up comedy on its own for a while or just uh, keep mixing it in with the magic? I think keep mixing it in. Um, as much as I love stand-up comedy, I really am passionate about the magic. So I reckon if I can take some of those stand-up comedy skills and put them into magic, that's kind of a good compromise without having to focus on one area really heavily. So with your magic then, you've, you've learned from Dom. Uh, you've worked yeah. with Lee and a few other performers on the local scene. Uh, I know you got some uh, some interesting uh, input from Carissa Hendricks when she was down uh, working at the Melbourne Magic Festival. And you've also gone overseas to Tannins. Yes. Yeah. So I didn't go to Tannins Magic Camp. I just went to the Tannin shop in New York. So I visited New York in 2016. So that was one year after I came second in the championships. And I thought, you know, I really love this. So when we were in New York, we went to all the New York attractions, but I have to say my favourite part was Tannins, you know. The Empire State Building was great and all, but Tannins, that was the highlight. <laughs> and so, yeah, we went there and um, I met Magic, who was one of the shopkeepers, and he was just incredible. He gave us almost an hour performance of the different tricks they had available. And I was just amazed with, yeah, the variety of stuff they have over there. It's incredible. So um, I learned a couple of tricks from him, which was a great experience and took them back. And I've been workshopping them ever since and performed some of them. And yeah, that was, that was amazing. Well, it's great that you've been uh, working with other people. I think that's the, the main thing. Anyone who's wanting to get into magic, a lot of people will tend to sort of sit down and watch YouTube videos and just copy what's going on on the, on the screen. Uh, some people will lash out and read a book, but you've been yeah. taking what I would consider the best approach and being mentored and, and, and working with other magicians and, and having that one-on-one -on -one experience. Thank you. Yeah, well, AIM Juniors is another program that Australian Institute of Magic runs, and that has been life-changing, honestly, not just in magic, but just in every aspect of my life. I feel like I can speak so much more confidently now, and um, I joined AIM Juniors in 2015, and I've been a part of it ever since. And just going there every month and workshopping other tricks of other magicians and building relationships with other magicians. And like you said, getting more advice and mentoring, that only, that helped build my magic skills, but um, the games we played about public speaking and things have just improved. You, you look at my English oral grades and you can see like I, I'm getting good grades because you know I can public speak and I really think I am genius for that. I don't think I would be able to speak as well as I can today without that group. Well, we have to give a shout out to uh, Dom and Lee and Josh Staley for all that yeah. work that they put in to the juniors every month. And uh, now that we've got uh, this lockdown, I, I think Josh is going to be doing 
aim juniors remotely and so it's opening up to uh, even more people so if you are i guess anywhere in the world and you'd like to join aim juniors we'll put the link down there and you can contact yeah, josh and sign up and uh, be a part of this amazing program yeah, definitely do it any young magicians watching it's absolutely life-changing now you've also got to perform here in the laneway theater yes i've yeah, got a clip, a clip here from slight night you provide us so let's just take a look at Prue in action live in the laneway theater change let's see if it works and it works <laughs> <laughs> Slight night here in the Laneway Theatre. Now, you've also got uh, a very special award, which just came up recently, the Pretty Foundation. Yeah, so um, the Pretty Foundation is a foundation based in Melbourne that empowers young girls all over Australia. So, um, like I mentioned before, I do textiles at school. And um, my textiles teacher, Miss Katrina Wheaton, nominated me for one of their awards. So, every year they have this um, award ceremony called Pretty Inspirational Awards. And they have six different categories. So, it's Pretty Artistic, which was the one I was nominated for. And then there's Pretty Sporty, Pretty Ambitious, and three others. And um, so Miss Whedon nominated me um, because of my design contributions at school, my magic, my circus, stand-up comedy, and I play music. So there's a couple of different things she thought, oh, yeah, she's pretty artistic. <laughs> so she um, nominated me for that, which was lovely. And thankfully, I won that award, which was very, very exciting. And they had the award tonight only recently, like you said. And what we didn't know was that all the six winners got put into another category, which was the overall award, which was called the Pretty Inspirational Awards. So um, there was just one award for the Pretty Inspirational Person out of the six. And again, I was very, very lucky and thankful to have won that award. So it was an honour to accept. And if Miss Whedon's watching, thank you so much. Couldn't have done it without you. So um, yeah, that was, that was an amazing experience. International Women's Day is on Sunday and one of the things that it encourages is to celebrate women's successes, celebrate what they can achieve. But we ask the question, why do we wait till girls become women before we start celebrating them? Why don't we start celebrating them now? If girls are focusing on their skills, their abilities, their character, they're far less likely to be worried about what they look like, about going on a diet, about changing the way they look. 
They are free to step into their potential. They are free to go conquer the world. They are free to actually find solutions to our societal issues. And that's what Pretty Inspirational is all about. And the winner of the 2020 Pretty Inspirational Award is Prudence Spencer. She taught herself how to become a magician at the age of 12. She's now 16 and a member of Circus Oz, is an incredible juggler and tumbler. And if that wasn't enough, she also excels in art and design. She designed a technological outfit for vision impaired teenage girls. It feels amazing to win the Pretty Inspiration Award. I'm so thankful for the Pretty Foundation for doing this. It's such an incredible opportunity for girls like me. Oh, I'm speechless. <laughs>、oh, congratulations on that. It's definitely inspiring. You've only been doing magic for how long?、Um, about five years. Five years. Five、yeah. years. Amazing. You've done so much in five years, and you really show what people can do if they are dedicated to it and they get really. Focused on 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 wanting to do magic and have a passion and a love for it. Are there, are there any tips you can give to any young people who just really you know, thought about maybe I should do magic, maybe not? I don't know. Maybe I should do guitar instead. What what would what, what's the advice you give them? Look, guitar and magic, pick them both up. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, your mental, everything, do it all.、Um, definitely keep up the magic though, and、um, just like you said, Tim too. Get mentor, get help, and keep talking to every single person. Don't just talk to one person because the more advice you can get, the better your routines will be, and the better you'll become as a performer. I still have such a long way to go, and so many people to talk to. But from the, all the people I've talked to so far,、um, my point,、uh, my point of view in magic and my routines have changed vastly, and that's been very, very helpful. So talk to people, keep practicing, and.、Um, Yeah, just do what you love and enjoy it. And here's the the last most the the the, the, the million dollar question: <laughs> Is it different? Is it more challenging? Is it easier? Is it harder? What is it like being a female in magic? I can't speak for all women because we've had many different experiences. But、um, from my point of view, I think being a woman in magic is awesome. Being a man in magic is awesome. Being any gender in magic, being any person, any race, any religion, whoever you are in magic is awesome. Magic is awesome. So, being a female in magic, I get to meet、um, different people like Lee and Nicola, and we get to workshop different things, and we can create shows that are unique. And that's something that's、um, been that's good about being a female in magic. It's unique, and you know there will be some challenges. Like sometimes you go into a competition and there's more men, but That's okay, you know. Encourage more women to do it. Be a point to inspire younger girls to do magic, and、um, keep doing what you love. And as long as you work hard, you can achieve anything, whatever gender you are. Perfect. <laughs> couldn't have said it better myself. I shouldn't have said it. I wouldn't have said it. But you said it perfectly. Now,、uh, you do have something for us to finish off. Yes, sure. I have a little magic trick for you with a bit of a coronavirus twist. Let me give you the full you. stage. So I'm going to do a trick called Professor's Nightmare. But like I said, we're going to put a bit of a coronavirus twist on it. All right. So this trick involves three ropes. One long rope, which today represents how long we feel coronavirus is going on for. Very, very long. All right. Now we have a medium rope. This one, which represents how long the government expects coronavirus to go on. So about that long. And then the last rope is the short rope. How long we want coronavirus to go on? Very, very short, if not shorter. All right. Now, usually I hand these out to the audience to inspect, but obviously we can't do that today. So trust in me; these ropes are normal. No trapdoors, no rabbits hiding in there. Nothing. All right. We'll gather up the ropes just like this. And now, when we gather them up just like this, we can really see their size difference, which shows how everyone's Point of view is varying in this difficult time, but there's one thing that stays the same. If we wash our hands, don't hoard toilet paper, and stay inside, coronavirus quarantine might be a little bit shorter than we expected. 
All right, so say if we get rid of going out and having nice luxury outings to the beach just for a short period of time, then maybe our community might stay safe altogether. All right, and like I said, community, we need to act as a whole community in this time. We need to work as one entity, one rope. And we can't have people act in their own self-interest because come on guys, we've got to work together. Let's get this thing over with. So like I said before, no hoarding toilet paper, no going outside unless it's essential and just wash your hands so we can all stay safe. All right, now we don't have to cut ties completely. Cut ties. All right, so we don't have to cut ties completely. You know, Tim and I, we're talking today. You don't have to completely social isolate. It's called social distancing, not social isolation, remember. So now we're kind of back at the start where we had three ropes. But before that, we had a long rope, a short rope, and a medium rope that represented different things. So say if this was the long rope and this was the medium rope, then we'd be missing the short rope, of course. But don't worry, because the short rope is right here. One long, one medium, and one short rope, and one magic trick with a bit of a coronavirus twist. That was it. Well done. Well, thank, thank you. you so much, Bruce Spencer, for joining us here at Langway Live. I'm going to have to say goodbye because you need to get back to your studies. Got to get that study on, yeah. Thank you so All much right. for talking with us. Bye-bye. See you, bye. -bye. bye.